framed photos, personal trainers, and a makeup artist. Of course, just some of the things suspended Senator Mike Duffy paid for out of his Senate account. Will the old Duff face any penalties for these expenses? For more on the trial, I'm joined by criminal lawyer Solomon Friedman here in Ottawa and in Kitchener, Ontario, journalist and author Michael Harris, who has written extensively about the Senate scandal in his recently published book, Party of One. So, Michael, first question to you. You know Duffy quite well. Have you spoken to him recently? What's his mood and how is he feeling about how the criminal trial is going so far? Well, Bob, uh, just before the trial began, I met with Duffy. Uh, we had lunch. Uh, the first thing I would say, I was astonished at how much he seems to have changed. Uh, he's lost a lot of weight, which is probably to the good from his health perspective. But he didn't have that bounce. Uh, you know him pretty well, too, and he didn't have that bounce that he used to have. Uh, but I'll, I do say this. When it comes to the issue of the trial, as much ridicule as he has absorbed and as much uh, caricature and satirical comment as he's absorbed, he still is looking forward to this because he thinks that at the end of the day he's going to be exonerated. Now, Mr. Friedman, uh, Don Bain did a masterful job in pointing out that the Senate rules were pretty murky to say the least. Uh, but on Thursday, it didn't look so good for Mr. Duffy with the fitness trainer, the money being paid out of this sort of s Senate slush fund. Well, we have to remember that there are always going to be two separate issues here. There's going to be the strict legal liability, but there are also going to be the optics. And the, the Crown is in no doubt relishing this week that it's had in terms of showing that, you know, these were not Senate-related work expenditures, and yet they went through a Senate expense fund. Now, of course, Mike, uh, you know, Mike Duffy may claim that these were somehow Senate-related. He tried to tie his personal trainer into a greater fitness initiative. But, you know, I, I think a judge is going to be fairly skeptical about that and there's really only limited work that Don Bain could do with that. And that's the other thing I was going to ask you is because if you sign a fake invoice or a fake contract uh, that's that's really falls under the Financial Administration Act and that's a much more different than a Senate rule isn't it? It is, you know, particularly where your defense is, by the letter of the law, I have clean hands, you know, and, and therefore I don't have a criminal fraudulent intent. But if you get into any instances where you are, in fact, either committing fraudulent acts or even, you know, elements of dishonesty under other statutes, such as the Financial Administration Act, that really chips away at this argument that I may have been neg negligent, I may have been careless, but I wasn't acting fraudulently. Okay. So, Michael... We've watched Don Bain put witnesses on the stand for days, including a mid-level human resources officer. I can only imagine what he will do when there is a parade of senior conservative advisors, Harper's inner circle, put on the stand in June. Yeah, I think that the, everybody knows that the heart of this trial is going to be what happens when Nigel Wright hits the stand. Because, Bob, the Canadians still have a lot of difficulty, not as a legal judgment, but they have a lot of difficulty as a simple common sense issue that if Duffy is guilty of accepting a $90,000 bribe, then why is the person that gave it to him not also charged? It just seems to defy logic and Donald Bain has already had a lot to say about that. I think also that the, the um, conservative uh, senior members that are going to be showing up, showing up at the trial are going to have a tough time with Bain because I think Duffy's defense is basically going to be everything I did I did because I was told to do it and everything I did I had clearance to do uh, and I think that that's going to be the acid test for his defense finally whether they have a comeback to that uh, whether these um, administrative contracts that seem to have crossed the line were actually ordered up by the PMO which I am told is going to be one of the things that happens. So Mr. Friedman uh, we've heard talk from Bain that this trial could go longer than June 18th and per presumably, it potentially could go into the election campaign in the fall. Is, is that entirely possible? It's absolutely possible. And, and you know, there, there are a couple of angles to that. You know, on, on the one hand, the Crown may be able to budget time in terms of how long they expect their witnesses to take, but because the defense has no obligation to disclose anything, you know, Don Bain can be fairly guarded about how long he intends to be with each witness. Now, you're supposed to provide the court with a decent estimate, but that's just that, an estimate. The other, the other thing happens when you try to schedule additional time. You have to remember, when this trial ends, that courtroom's going to be used for another trial, just like all the courtrooms in the, in the courthouse are going to be used for other matters. So finding time will generally require that you skip ahead, and if we look how the dates line up here, it's very possible these continuation dates could bring us 
into the you know early beginnings and well into the meat of the election campaign. Well, Michael, we know the prime minister wouldn't want to have that happen. If Duffy gets on the stand, what's he going to say about his conversations with the prime minister about his appointment as a senator when everyone knew he lived in Ottawa? You know, all I've been told from the very beginning of this, Bob, is that it all leads back to the prime minister. I don't know what was said in the conversation other than that the prime minister ordered Duffy personally to repay the money. But we now also know, according to stuff that's before the court, that Nigel Wright actually briefed the prime minister and said that it is possible, maybe even likely, that Duffy's housing expenses were not illegal. And he wanted to make sure the prime minister was comfortable with that. I think Duffy, when he gets on the stand, is going to basically be saying, I was a good soldier. I did what they asked me to do, and now I'm being crucified for it. So uh, final question to you, Mr. Solomon. I've asked you this before, but I've still come back to the fact, is it possible that the prime minister could get called? You know, it's interesting. He doesn't appear to have been on the crown witness list and that he hasn't been subpoenaed. Now, Don Bain certainly can subpoena him. If he believes he has relevant evidence to give, he may very well do that. But you have to remember the, the trial dynamic. Don Bain has had such success with these witnesses because he's allowed to cross-examine them because they are crown witnesses. He can ask them leading questions. He can literally take them exactly where he wants them to go. You can't do that with your own witness. So it would be a very dangerous proposition to put the prime minister on the stand and then simply be, only be able to ask him open-ended, broad questions. And then have the crown, in fact, if they choose to do so, take him exactly where they want him to go. So you have to remember, Don Bain can do one thing in cross-examination, but it would be a completely different story when it comes to his own witnesses. Great. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks for talking to us, Michael. My pleasure. Take care, Bobby.